Conditional statements, that is, if, else if, and else statements, allow your program to respond in a variety of ways depending on which of the given conditions evaluates to true. This results in a more flexible function of script, as different blocks of code can be executed depending on how the condition is evaluated. Let's look at how the variability of a script can change. Without conditional statements, all the code in a script will be executed. However, adding an if-else statement adds variability. As seen here, the script has reached a point where a certain condition needs to be evaluated. If the condition is evaluated to be true, then some conditional statement is executed. However, if it is evaluated to false, the else branch is taken and some other code is executed. We can have even more options by adding an else if statement. As we see here, the start already looks familiar. If the first condition is evaluated to true, the conditional code gets executed. However, if false, we reach a second condition which is evaluated as well. If true, some other conditional code is executed. Only if both the first and second condition are false does the else condition get executed. You can see that adding more and more else if statements greatly increases the routes your code can go down. The syntax in MATLAB is quite straightforward. The block of conditional statements starts with the if statement, followed by an expression that gets evaluated. You can then add as many else if statements as you want, or none at all. These also need an expression to evaluate. In the end, you can have an else statement, but as with the else if statements, it is not required. Don't forget the end command to mark the end of your conditional code. Let's see how these conditional statements are actually used. We will create a script here that tests your luck. First, we will specify a random number using MATLAB's inbuilt rand function. This creates a random number between 0 and 1. By specifying 1, 1 in its input field, we indicate that we want a scalar. Now, if the random number is equal to 0.8888, we display the message, Wow, lucky you! Else, if it is smaller than 0.8888, we display, Well, the chances were pretty high, which is true. Finally, if the number is larger than 0.8888, we display unlucky. Executing the script gives us different results depending on what number was generated. So we can see that this little program already is able to execute different statements depending on the evaluation of its condition, which is in this case checking the random number against some preset values. But now to a more usable application. Remember the cookbook script from last video where we made LB Medium? Well, what if I want to make a variety of agars? Couldn't I use conditional statements for that? Yes, you could, and we will. So let's open the script and see how it's done. Last time we've already specified the medium to be LB. Now I want to make SOB and maybe others so we will change the value of the medium variable. Next, we will specify a cell containing all the different mediums we could possibly make. So four in our case, LB, LB Agar, SOB, and SOC. Now onto the conditional statements. Here we have to evaluate which medium gets made by checking the above specified medium against all possible media we could make. In our case, these are the four specified in the media cell above. So if the medium is equal to LB, that is the first entry in the media cell, we want to display the LB recipe. If it is not equal to LB, but is equal to SOB, we want to display the SOB recipe, and so on. So let's first check if medium is equal to LB using an if statement and the inbuilt ST or CMP function, which compares two strings. Why can't we use the double equal sign to compare them? 
This is because it would throw an error due to the strings being of different size. Now below the if statement, we set the amount and type variable equal to the amount and types required for one litre of LB medium. Next, we add an else if statement to check if the medium specified is equal to LB agar. You can probably see where this is going. We have to do the same thing for SOB and SOC. I have already done so and will simply paste it on here, but it is no different to what we have done previously. Now depending on what you set your medium value to be, the appropriate amount and type is then set in the conditional block below and used in the calculation, and finally it will be displayed. So let's see if it worked. I want 350 milliliters here of SOB. Excellent, now I want 235 millilitres of SOC. Brilliant, and it worked again. Thank you for watching. This has been another video in the iGEM Academy MATLAB series. This video was on conditional statements and the next video will be on functions.